Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for your most holy word. We thank you that your word will go forth this morning under the anointing and teaching and preaching of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, rise up extra big within me. Speak through my lips. Think through my mind. Let the word go forth boldly, accurately, uncompromisingly with power and love. And let it minister to all the needs of the people. I thank you and praise you, Father, my preaching and teaching. It's not with words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and power so that their faith should rest not in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. We ask for understanding of the scriptures that you clearly revealed to us the things you have for us this day, that the name of Jesus be glorified and magnified and that the word of God have free course. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the head of the church, Satan, we bind you. We break your power. Every work of darkness in Jesus' name, go from this place right now. We lose the power, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We lose the ministering angels in the love, the peace, the joy of the Lord. In Jesus' name, and everybody says, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's open our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Praise God for evermore. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. And let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 4. We look at verse 4. It says, For I know of nothing against myself, yet I am not justified by this, but he who judges me is the Lord. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts, then each one's praise will come from God. In other translations, it, it says that he will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the intents and motives of the heart. What we're going to be looking at this morning is motives. Motives, understanding motives. Why do people do things? Very, very important. And especially in the area of what we call hidden motives or hidden agendas. And motives is something that everyone has to deal with, whether you are a believer or an unbeliever. Because sometimes people have good motives and sometimes people don't have good motives. And sometimes people will smile in your face and they will stab you in the back. <laughs> and they'll twist the knife in your back, okay, before they pull it out. So motives is something that all of us have to deal with. Why do people do things? What is the motive for doing things? And you'll find that this affects all of us because we have people who have hidden agendas, hidden agendas. You can see that in the workplace. You may have received a job and the person who interviewed you, they liked you. In other words, you have favor with them. And this is something that we, are, we have, we're to have favor with God and we're to have favor with men. Can you say amen? Glory be to God. And favor is something that you grow into. You grow in favor. Grow in favor. Favor is more valuable than money. Because favor, people will do things for you that they won't do for other people. They will open up doors for you that they won't open up for other people. And your family are recipients of this favor because people do things for them and they have no, they don't understand why they're doing it. Well, that's the favor of God that is upon you because not only is favor upon you, but that favor goes to your family members also. Can you say amen? Praise God forevermore. Now, the person hires you, you have favor with that person and they like you. They see you, or oh, put it like this, they see your potentials of where you can go in this particular company. Okay? But then something happens. You get with a group of people 
who talk about the boss, who talk about those who are in authority, and they cause trouble in that particular company or whatever that might be. Well, you all got mighty quiet. You hear a pin drop on the carpet. Praise God forevermore. Okay? They hired you because you have favor with them. But then you see this group. You see how this group operates. And you start getting with them. You may not be saying anything. But what they're trying to do the motive is to pull something out of you so that you will say and that it will go back to those who are in authority. In other words, they're playing your friend. But they're not really your friend because they are relaying back to those in authority what you have said and they add not only their two cents, but their 50 cents to it. <laughs> Are you all hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying? Amen. And the next thing you know is you're starting to lose favor with that particular person who hired you and also other people in the company who are in authority. Now, sometimes people see groups like this. They know they're dangerous, but they get with them anyway. <laughs> and they get with them because they know that this particular group talks about people. And their mind they get with this group because they're kind of believing that they'll talk about me. So I'll go with them and then that way they won't talk about me. Okay? Now, that is a great mistake. Okay? Great mistake. Because they're going to talk about you whether you are with them <laughs> Or you're not with them. I always use this example with my uncle. One time he took me over to somebody's home. And they were, he was eating and the people were eating. They asked me, did I want something to eat? And I said, no. No, thank you. You know. So when we left, we got in the car. I asked my uncle, I said, where, when are, where are we going to go to eat? He said, what do you mean, where are we going to go to eat? We have all that food in there, and you didn't eat anything? I said, well, Mama told me you never eat at people's homes because they're going to talk about you. So my uncle said, and he used to call me Moose. And he said, Moose, he said, people are going to talk about you whether you eat or you don't eat. So you might as well let them talk about you on a full stomach and eat. <laughs> so that was a lesson. How many follow what I'm saying? Amen. Nothing but spiritual, but that's the truth. And that is the truth. They're going to talk about you. And sometimes we do things so people won't talk about us. But they talk about us anyway because there's the idea of, I want to be accepted. Well, keep your finger here a moment. Thank you, Jesus. Are you all still out there with me? Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's turn over to the book of Ephesians and look at Ephesians chapter 1. People do all kind of things to be accepted. They can grow up in a household where the parents really love them, uh, do all kinds of things for them, and they get with the wrong crowd. And they get with the wrong crowd because they want acceptance. But see, the Bible tells us something very, very clear in 1 Corinthians 15, 33. It says, bad manners corrupt the good. 
Okay? Well, one of the things that we all must know, we all must know, let's look at verse 5, Ephesians 1, verse 5. Praise God for evermore. It says, having predestinated, uh, predestinated us to, uh, to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. It is God's good pleasure Amen. to have saved us. Amen. His good pleasure. Yes. Not just pleasure, but his good pleasure. See, sometimes we have in our mind, sometimes you hear people talk about that God was sitting on the throne in heaven and he, he was bored. Well, I want to tell you there's no boredom in heaven. <laughs> That's just what the world presents to people, okay? And they were, he was bored and he said, devil, come up here. He said, now, let me tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a man and this man is going to mess up. And I have to send my son to save him. Then I'm going to come back again and completely restore him. But in the meantime, so we won't be bored. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're going to have this, this kind of game. I'm going to have you go mess up things for man. Okay. We'll redeem them later on. But in the meantime, we are going to have you mess up things for men and women. Okay? And sometimes people think that. And then the Lord says to the devil, you know I got to save them because I made them. <laughs> if you made them, you got to save them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sometimes that's the thinking of people. Can you say, you owe me because you made me. I didn't ask you to make me. Okay. <laughs> so, at any rate, we're going to play this game. And then there's the feeling, well, he made me. He had to save me. And then you have teaching and people speaking, you're not worthy, you're not worthy, you're not worthy, you're not worthy. But then God tells us it's his good pleasure to save us. Big difference, can you say amen? You see, we're worthy because of Jesus. It's not based upon our own righteousness. It's based upon what Jesus has already done. The finished work of Christ. You see, and if you're always looking at something wrong with you, I guarantee you the devil will find many things wrong with you and you are not careful. You will start agreeing with him because you never think you're right before God. This is where righteousness comes in, that we are the righteousness of God in Christ. God made us righteous is his righteousness, not our righteousness, but his righteousness. And it was his good pleasure to save us. It is his good pleasure, as the Bible says, turn over to, keep your finger here a moment, look at Luke chapter 12. So you have to go by the scripture. You have a, a lot of teaching that brings guilt and condemnation to people. But guilt and condemnation does not come from God. Guilt and condemnation comes from the devil. Because Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says, Therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Okay? If you don't believe you're worthy before God and always something wrong with you, that's going to have an effect upon your faith in God. Hello. It will have an effect upon your faith in God. If you believe that, you're not worthy. Uh, there's always something wrong with you. You're looking to find something wrong with you. That's going to have a great f effect upon your faith because you feel you're never right with God. You'll feel, and that's why I say this is feelings. You'll have feelings and you'll have thoughts that God is holding things back from you. 
And he's not holding anything back, but sometimes we block it with what we believe because we're not believing right. See, you can either believe the truth or you can believe a lie. There's no in between. Either you believe the truth or you believe a lie. God makes it very clear that we are justified and have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Justification, very important church doctrine. There's nothing else to do. Christ has already done it for us. If you want to walk by faith, you want to walk in righteousness, you have to believe you're righteous. If you don't really believe you're righteous, you're not going to fully walk in righteousness. You will not fully walk in faith because you're always looking for something wrong with you. That's a hindrance because I guarantee you the devil will find something wrong with you and make you believe that. Hello, are you all still out there? Amen. Like over in Luke chapter 12 a moment. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Praise God forevermore. Can you say amen? Religion. Religion will make you believe you are unrighteous. Religion will make you feel and think guilt and condemnation all the time. Notice in Luke chapter 12 a moment and put it in your Bible, underline it, whatever you do with your uh, cell phone, whatever little stuff you have there, put that down and over there. It's in Luke chapter 12, Verse 32, it says, Do not fear, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Notice it's his good pleasure to give us the kingdom. We are in the kingdom of God now. And what we have to learn to do is that we have to learn to think like God, speak like God, see things God's way, and do things God's way. That's what discipleship is all about. Very, very, very important. And God doesn't see us as little worms squirming in the dirt. <laughs> Hello, are you all still out there? Amen, that's not how God sees us. He sees us as heirs and joint heirs. He sees us as children. His word tells us that. But see, you can read the Bible with a religious mind and you will miss what God is saying. Because you have blinded your mind to what God has actually said. You know, I don't know why I'm getting into this this morning. It's supposed to be in motives, but we're going into, into certain things that are very important because you have some people, they have such guilt and condemnation. And then you have some people who can make you feel guilt and condemnation. Okay. And you need to watch that. You need to understand. You need to understand how much God loves a person. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. I didn't mean to get into this this morning. Praise God for evermore. Hallelujah. See, God doesn't throw away people. No, never. Ever. If he did, I'd been thrown away a long time ago. <laughs> Long time ago. First Corinthians chapter five. Notice here. And here we see a man in the church of Corinth. And he committing sexual immorality. All right. He's 
Well, let's look at it. Start at verse 1. It says, It is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you, and such sexual immorality as is not even named among the Gentiles, that a man has his father's wife. In other words, he took his father's wife. The son took the father's wife. Okay? He says, even the Gentiles don't do this. <laughs> now, this person is a Christian. Okay? And it says in verse 2, And you are puffed up and would have not rather mourn that he who has done this deed might be taken away from among you. He's talking to the elders here who are in charge. They're just allowing this to happen. They're not saying anything. Okay? But Paul says, For I indeed is absent in body, but present in spirit, have already judged as though I were present. Oh, excuse me, I was present. Him who has done this deed. In other words, I've already judged this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together among with my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, it says, deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. Now, underline flesh. Flesh, flesh, flesh. That his spirit may be saved. When we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, our spirit man is saved. The Bible tells us to do two things. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing your mind to the word of God. Okay? Then present your body a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service. After we're saved, we become a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away. All things are new and all things of God. God has kicked out our old spirit. He's given us a new spirit with his life in nature. He who receives the son receives life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Very simple. Receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Can you say amen? amen. Glory be to God. Now, it says the Spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice his Spirit will be saved. His Spirit is saved. He's turned over to Satan for the destruction of the servant, of the destruction. Now, what does that mean? Turned over to Satan. In other words, the church would have to do this. They would turn such a one over to Satan. Now, this is something that God knows the timing of it. He sometimes believers see that, oh, he's messing up here in church. Just turn him over to Satan. No, <laughs> it doesn't. Do what does it mean, turn him over to Satan, first of all? So you need to understand that. In other words, you don't pray for him anymore. You don't fellowship with him anymore. You bar them from coming into your congregation. That's what that involves. But you have to understand the patience of God. God is very patient. Because if that's the case, I would have been turned over many, many years ago. Are you all hearing what I'm saying? Do you see the mind has to be renewed? You, and once your mind is renewed, your body starts to follow. Are you all following what I'm saying? Amen. And this is an area, this shows you how much God loves people. Now, a person can apostatize, but they have to know what they are doing. And 98% of Christians cannot apostatize because they don't know what they're doing. Most of, most of them don't understand salvation. Hello, are you all still out there? Most of them don't understand salvation. They have no understanding of what salvation is. I would always say, I say, if I give a seminar on Satan and demons, it will be crowded. People will be queuing in to get in. If I had give a seminar on salvation, only a handful of people 
will show up because they figure they know all about salvation. No, there's so much to learn about salvation because it entails so many different doctrines. Justification, holiness, all kinds, righteousness. We can go on and on and on and on. Okay? Boy, you all got quiet on me out there. Sometimes we have people in the church who mess up, goof up, goof up, goof up, goof up, goof up, and then sometimes we want to call fire and brimstone down, down on them. <laughs> well, God knows how to deal with them. Can you say amen? amen. The thing of it is, we are not to judge. Bible tells us about judging people. The same measure that you judge people, it will come back to you. And there's only one judge. Are you all following what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Glory. Your patience may be running out working with this bad person, but God has sent someone else who has some nice fresh patient, patience with them. Okay? But this is where God desires that all men be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. Amen. That's what he desires. Can you say amen? Turn over to 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. Praise God forevermore. I don't know how we got into this this morning, but the Holy Ghost is good. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Don't let guilt and condemnation come in. Because it will hinder your walk with God. And guilt and condemnation are demons. They're evil spirits. They produce the condition of being not quite right with God. Feelings that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. Thoughts that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. Can you say amen? amen. Praise God forevermore. We're going over to 1 Timothy chapter 2 a minute. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God for evermore. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. First Timothy chapter 2. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Notice it says here in First Timothy chapter 2. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Just a second here. Hallelujah. Verse 4. Well, start, look at verse 3. Might as well get all of it. It says, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. The Lord wants all men saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. That's God's will. All men. Hallelujah. People go to hell for not for rejecting Jesus. Because he is our savior. He is the savior of mankind. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. Everybody knows John 3:16. But they never quote verse 17. Let's turn over there a moment. Turn over to John chapter 3. Go ahead and read it, God. Now the Holy Ghost is good. He's trying to clear things up. John 3, 17. Hallelujah. And it says here, verse 17, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world. Why? Because the world was already condemned. <laughs> already condemned. It says what? But that the world through him might be saved. Is through Christ. Through Christ. Through Christ. Salvation comes through Christ. Jesus says, I'm the truth, the way, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through, 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 through me. Can you say amen? And Acts 17 lets us know. Turn over there a moment. Praise God forevermore. 
Hallelujah. See, I never get tired of these people. So, oh, that's so basic. That's so basic. But then they, they don't know sometimes if they're going to heaven or hell. Just tell you like it is. Hallelujah. Look at Acts chapter 17. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Acts chapter 17. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 17. And I'm looking for verse... I have to just... There's salvation in no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. Praise God forevermore. Give me... Anybody got that verse? <coughs> Hallelujah. Acts chapter 17. Dear wife, there's salvation in no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. Oh, I'm sorry. Four to, uh, Acts 4.12. Acts 4. Acts 4.12? Go, to, go to Acts 4.12. I'm sorry. I'm in the wrong one. He was in the spirit. So. <laughs> Let's go to Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Acts chapter 4. Glory be to God. But this is very, very important. Very important scripture. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. It says, Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven. Where do we live? Under, under heaven. <laughs> given among men. Notice is given among men by which we must be saved. It is through Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Jesus is the truth, the way, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through him. Okay? Now, sometimes people in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, God wants a spirit saved. All right? And sometimes people think, well, this is once saved, always saved. No, not this is not once saved, all, all saved, because you have 1 Timothy chapter 6, turn over there a moment. As I said, a person can apostatize, but he or she must know what they are doing. And most Christians don't know what they're doing. They go to church, they sing, they dance, they jump and do all the numbers, but not really understanding what has been given to them. You all sit out there with me. Hallelujah. Where did I say go? <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> Look over at First Timothy chapter 4 a moment. I didn't know we were going this way this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 4. This is apostasy we're looking at. A person who apostatizes has to know what they are doing. They have to make, have to meet those requirements and conditions. Now, here's apostasy. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. It says, now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times, we're in the last days now. Some, some people just think they found the last days. No, we've been in the last days <laughs> since the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Okay, some people say, oh, we just, we're in the last days now. We've been there all the time. Okay, and it says here, some will depart from the faith. Underline that depart from the faith. Now, what does that mean, depart from the faith? That means they were with the faith. Now, why did they depart from the faith? Write that down. Why? Why? Answer. As I always say, the answer is in the scripture. You don't have to go looking around to try to find it. The scripture answers the question. Why? Well, giving heed to deceiving spirits. And doctrines of demons. Demons, doctrines of demons. 
That's why they departed. Doctrines of demons. I think I sent Pastor John, I don't know, there was this one particular preacher, he was preaching about how powerful he was and the anointing on his life. And then as he was preaching, the stage, the back of the stage fell down and fell on his head. <laughs> <laughs> deceiving spirits deceiving spirits okay deceiving spirits like in Mormonism other false religions they departed from the faith doctrines of demons. Salvation no longer has the focus on Christ, but on other things. And they believe that. Believing that universalism, universalism is everybody's saved, but they don't know it. <laughs> I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you what it is. Everybody saved and just don't know it. And they, and they don't have to receive Jesus to get safe. That's an abomination. That's false doctrine. Doctrines of demons. That Jesus and Lucifer are brothers. That's not true. That's a lie. Are you all following what I'm saying? Amen. That's why as a believer, that's why you need to come and get the word of God. So that you will know. Hosea 4.6 says... My people perish because of the lack of knowledge. Turn over there a minute. I want you to see that because we always look at Hosea 4, 6. But then we need to look at the next verse, a part of that verse. Okay, so he, Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. He says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. What you don't know can cause you to die way before your time. What you don't know, the devil will steal from you. Do all kinds of things from you. He'll lie and make you think that he's all powerful. That there's no power in the name of Jesus. And that's all a lie. Okay, that's lack of knowledge. That's why coming to Bible study, it's not for God's benefit. <laughs> it's for our benefit. So we have to learn the things of God. We have to learn to walk with God. Can you say amen? Now, look at this one here. Because you have rejected knowledge. There's a second aspect of it. People get the knowledge, but they reject the knowledge. Like the Bible is saying, don't go to witchcraft doctors. Don't go to psychics. Don't go to fortune tellers. But they go anyway to get their future. Well, you're getting a future, but that's not God's future. That's the devil's plan. That's the devil's future. Are you all hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying? Amen. I've had people understand this. Don't chase prophecy. Amen. Amen. Don't chase it. Amen. Prophecy is, Bible says, war a good word for it by the prophecies that have gone before you. Don't stop prophesying. But don't go to a witchcraft doctor for prophecy. <laughs> or a psychic for prophecy. Why are you all so quiet today? 
Lord is dealing with some of these things this morning that you can help fellow believers. But some people reject that. Oh, it was true. Because what he told me, it was true. Well, he's telling you what's on the devil's plan. Not God's plan for your life. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory be to God. Praise God forevermore. Sometimes people, they start having a prayer and worship life, word life. And then somebody will come along and say, you don't have to do all that. <laughs> and then they stop doing it. And then the devil really hits them. Turn to the person right and say, say Jesus raised me from the dead. <laughs> I know you all are alive. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. These are things that believers have to watch out for. You have to watch out. There's motives of some people who are used by the devil is to get you off God's path. With the purpose of deceiving you. That's why the Bible gives so many, many warnings, especially here in the New Testament, about deception. Don't be deceived. And the Lord clearly stated that going to psychics is an abomination to him. Going to witch, do, work in witchcraft. All these things are an abomination to him. And we could go on and on in this particular area because what deception does, it leads a person astray. You start down the right road and here comes deception to get you on the wrong road. That's why we learn the things of God. That's why faith is such a very important foundation. Because anytime your feelings, anytime your thoughts go against the word of God, you must believe God's word over those thoughts and feelings. We wrestle against flesh and we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principality, power, dominion, and spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, I'm supposed to be on motives. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit has kind of led us, me into this particular area this morning. Because you'll see in this particular age that we're in now, there is a lot of deception and it's going to get worse. Because so much comes over the Instagram, the TikTok, and the YouTube, and the, and the ZooTube, and all the rest of it. <laughs> with a lot of error. And people and believers just see it and they run with it. You have to... Bible says, turn over to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. See, when I... First got saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. You all have heard my testimony. I had a supernatural experience. Fiery swords come down from heaven, tongues of fire. I knew God hit me. But I refused to go to church. I refused to get into the Word of God. God saved my spirit, but my mind and my body was given over to the disco and the things of the world. I was without knowledge. And I rejected some of that knowledge of God. Well, things didn't change until I said, okay, Lord, I'm going with you all the way. Hallelujah. And then I yielded myself. Notice I said, to be taught the things of God. That's where a believer has to do. You have to yield yourself to learn the things of God. If you don't know the things of God, you are open game for the, for the devil and his demons. You are 
what you call fair meat. <laughs> you all follow what I'm saying? That's what I said. Coming to church, praying in tongues, getting in the Word of God, that is not for God's benefit. That's for our benefit. Our benefit. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Where are we going now? <laughs> Huh? Which one now? First Thessalonians chapter 5. Okay, praise God forevermore. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Amen. We're kind of having a quiet Sunday, but God is, <laughs> is, is speaking to us this morning. Because you can help out fellow believers. You can show them the truth. You can speak the truth to them. Okay? <laughs> Hallelujah. 1 Thessalonians 5. I'll make it 1 Thessalonians 5. Verse 19. We'll start there. It says, do not quench the Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit move freely. Can you say amen? Don't despise prophecies. That means don't stop people from prophesying. I know in some particular churches, well, I remember, I'll use this church as an example. The pastor didn't want me to prophesy because the pastor had some extra things going on in his church. And I had prophesied to different people and through the word of knowledge, things were revealed. So the pastor shut down all the prophecy. Okay. Later on, what he was doing was found out. Okay. But don't despise prophesy. Don't stop people prophesying. Now, here is our responsibility. Verse 21. That's right. Prove all things. Yes. Hold fast what is good. In other words, we have the responsibility of proving it. Very, very, very important. Can you say amen? amen. You're not going to get a prophecy that's from God. And that prophecy says, Mary, go marry this man. He has a wife. That's okay. She's going to be divorced and then you get him. <laughs> You all hear what I'm saying? Amen. Praise God. We have to prove the prophecy. We have to. And if you don't understand the prophecy, don't go around and ask your friends what it means. You have five friends and they'll give you five goofy answers. And that's what people do. What do you think this means? What do you think this means? They get a dream. What do you think this dream means? And don't get a book on psychology trying to interpret the dreams. Because that's already off. And you all hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Amen. Glory be to God. Prophecy comes, you get an understanding of prophecy when you start going forth. You get the revelation of it. You get the understanding of it. Because you will be able to hold on to it. And prophecy takes you beyond where you are now. Where beyond where you are. It will, will speak things to you that edify, exhort, and comfort. And if you messing up, you might get a little bit of that in there too. Straighten up. Fly right. <laughs> Are you all still out there? Amen. Amen. Praise God forevermore. So Noah says, test all things, prove all things, hold fast what is good. Amen. Prove it. It will prove itself. Amen. Which leads to another area. We, years ago when they had tapes, that was last century, last millennium. 
How many remember that? And maybe some of you in here, you don't know about that. But they used to have tapes and you record. And we would have uh, different meetings and stuff and we would have the uh, tape in a cover and it will show you how to um, interpret prophecy. It tells you what to do and what not to do. Okay, And one of the things that was in there, it was don't try to prove prophecy yourself. Help God out. And sometimes people want to help God out. Can you say amen? No, amen. I mean, no, God doesn't need help. <laughs> amen. You yourself, prophecy comes to pass in God's timing, in God's way. You see? Very, very important. What you don't understand, pray. Amen. Pray. Yes, very, very important. Comes to pass God's timing and in God's way. Amen. Not man's way. Amen. Yeah. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You okay over there? <laughs> God is good. Now, we've gone about all this to, to, today in this particular area. Praise God. The Holy, this is what the Holy Ghost wants to share with the church today. Amen. Uh, okay, turn to 2 Corinthians chapter. Just a second here. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Okay. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Glory be to God. And this is to make you aware and vigilant concerning this area of deception. So you won't get deceived. Because the word talks so much about it. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. <laughs> and notice it says in verse 13, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. Number one, notice it says, for such are false apostles. Okay, what is a false apostle? A false apostle is someone who's, who's not an apostle. This is where calling comes in, right? Calling, what is calling? Calling comes from God. Amen. As you look at the epistles, you'll see the, the greeting. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Not by men, but by God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. You have a lot of people going around today calling themselves apostles. They went, but they weren't sent. Now, you all follow what I'm saying. You do not choose what office you are called to. God is the one that calls you to the office. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Okay? You have a lot of people declaring that they're apostles, they're apostles, they're apostles, they're apostles. The ministry will speak to will speak for itself. Are you all following what I'm saying? It'll speak for itself. Holly, lift your hand. There's a nice little anointing on that. You all get a little bit. Ooh, there you go. Get that little touch of anointing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, that's good. Can you see? That's a refreshing of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. If you are an apostle, God will call you to be an apostle. And if God calls you to be an apostle, you have to develop in that office. And that's the key. You develop in that office. You learn to operate in the other four offices. Very, very, very important. 
Not that I'm apostle so-and-so, and I'm apostle this, and I'm apostle that, and I'm apostle that. Okay? Prof prophetic. You have to be called to be a prophet. You have to develop into that office. If you look at Paul the apostle, let's go back to apostle. The day that Paul was called to be an apostle, you can see it in the book of Acts. Okay? He was just as much as an apostle the day he was called than years later, except he had to develop in that office. You all hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying? He had to develop in that particular office. Now, I don't have time to teach on the apostolic ministry, okay, or the prophetic <laughs> today, because it involves quite a lot where you understand the office that God calls you to. See, traditionally, people were just called to be, they weren't called, but this is tradition. A person was either a pastor or an evangelist. And many people came to be pastors even when they weren't called to be a pastor. So they would start a church and the church would finance their ministry. I'm just telling you how, how it is, okay? You have to be called to be a pastor. You have to be called to be an evangelist. You have to be called to be a teacher. And that's not a Sunday school teacher, necessarily. That's to the office of the teacher. The office of the teacher, okay? The anointing of that office, of whatever office, and God takes you into new dimensions of office. Okay? The anointing goes with your office. And you start developing, learning how to work with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And one of the keys of working with the Holy Spirit is you have to learn to let the Holy Spirit lead. Amen. I have different teaching this morning. Whoa. I didn't know I was going to go into this, but I just flow with the Holy Ghost. Amen. You have to learn to work with the Holy Spirit. Oh, you all hearing what the Spirit of the yeah. Lord is saying? Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. See, the Holy Spirit, He's our guide. He leads us. Amen. This is where you must learn. Spend time with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to God. See, you can have notes, A, B, C, D. But as you minister with the Holy Spirit, Him leading you, He may not even take those notes. Because it's to minister to the need of the people. It's to build the people up. Build you up. Not to hear A, B, C, D, but to build you up. Okay? Don't miss the teaching we're going to have on this April the 6th and on the 13th. I'll be teaching on operations, understanding operations of the Holy Spirit, how to flow into different operations. My wife will be teaching the origin and operations of demons. So call your friends, tell your friends to come, okay? Put your Instagram down that day. <laughs> and come and get what the Lord will have for you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Very, 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 very important. Hallelujah. Ooh, there's, let, get a little bit more of that. See? Praise God forevermore. That's right. Get a little bit more of that. That's the Holy Ghost pouring out upon you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Ooh, there you go. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God's going to heal your stomach today. Step out in the aisle. He's going to heal your stomach today. Yes. Get out in the aisle. Holy Ghost is moving. Stop right there. 
Hurry up, get behind him, all you guys. Get behind her. Woo, hallelujah. There you go. Receive it right now. Going to take care of that indigestion. Woo, in Jesus' name, be healed. Oh, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You're going to feel like uh, fire going through your digestive system. That's the Holy Ghost. Ooh, healing your digestive system right now, bringing it into perfect balance right now as we thank Jesus. That's right. Give him praise. Give him glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Oh, we look to Jesus. Ooh, hallelujah. There you go. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise him out there. Go on and praise him out there. Oh, ramakarende la makora brasa karende. That's right. Lift your hands high and thank the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, 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 oh, hallelujah. Oh, Ramasa Kora, Brasa Karende la Gora. Yea, Lord, oh, Ramakara, Mashanda la Makora. Every spirit of infirmity in Jesus' name, come out and go from this place and go from them in Jesus' name. We're to lose that anointing to break every yoke. They're healed in the name of Jesus. Healed in the name of Jesus. Oh, Ramasa Korea, Re Karamashanda, Re. Oh, Rabrasa Kalamakora, Makarinde. Ora makarende la makara makarende arende. Ora masakari arende la makora brasakara. Oh, hallelujah. That's the power of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Oh, thank Jesus right now. Hallelujah. Ora masakora makarende la sakari arende la masanda. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Ramasa Korea, rende le abraza, caria rende la gorra. Are Korea, re Korea, re se le mi arende la macorra. Oh, la masa cala machanda. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, Ramasa cara macorra macarende. Oh, Ramakara Masakara Makarama. Oh, Ramakara Makarama Karama. Oh, Rekara Makara Makarama Karinde. Oh, Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. Woo, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Ramasakara Makarinde. Ye Lord, ye Lord, ye Lord. Oh, Ramasakara Makarinde. Oh, Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Maser An, An, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Maser Isi, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, Maser Celebrate the man, oh, oh, Señor Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Ramakara Makarinde la Makara Masyanda la Kora. That's right. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah.